Thus, we come to the part where I actually need to talk about the fall of Rome. We've been in parallel with the last chapter on the Romans up until this point, but we're going to move beyond Rome. To do that, I need to tell you what happens. So after Constantine dies in 337, Christianity, of course, booms. In 380, we see Emperor Theodosius, who issues or makes Christianity the state religion. In 391, we see a return to some elements of paganism, and then we see a return to Christianity. And by 394, they're abolishing the Olympic Games that at this point are about 800 years old. And we see two, two sons take over. We see these co-rulers happening again, this idea of the Western and Eastern Empire, and things are going to start falling apart. You see Rome really being chipped away at here, what had been Rome, until we hit about 480. We'll get to that in a second. So in the West, the, tent, the capital moves. It moves to Ravenna in 402 basically they're going look rome is no longer a city we want to be tied to and so we're going to go ahead and move to ravina kind of restart things maybe in a place that's a little more defensible a little cleaner not surrounded by a city of a million people many of whom are poor out of work and tend to rise up against the emperor on a fairly regular basis we will see continual invasion happening Primarily, of course, we are in Italy, so most of this is going to be from the north. And if you look at the names of these groups that come in, we have the Vandals, we have the Goths. These groups today give us pejorative terms, such as vandalism or Goth as sort of a negative term related to a social group. Now, these groups are not necessarily coming to Rome because they want to invade the Romans. What's happening is the Huns this green arrow coming in, are coming in from the east, and they're pushing all of these other groups in front of them because they're defeating them on a fairly regular basis. So what they're doing is they're forcing other groups into Roman territory. From a Roman perspective, it looks like an invasion. From the perspective of, say, the Franks or the Visigoths or the Ostrogoths, Rather than an invasion, this is them trying to get away from an enemy that seems greater than the Romans. The Huns being very, very powerful. So Ravenna is remote. It's more easily defended. In 409, the Visigoths invade. In 410, they will sack Rome itself. But this is not the end of Rome. In 476, so another 66 years later, the Ostrogoths will sack Rome. And this historically marks the end of the Roman Empire because Odo Odoacer comes to power. Now, the Ostrogoths are Christians, but they are technically heretics, according to the papacy, because they are Arians. I could get into that, but basically, they're not Christian in the traditional sense at the time. This is a huge blow to the church. It's a huge blow to the Roman Empire because they really don't exist anymore. But let me assure you that in 476, if you were alive at this time, living somewhere, say, in the northern Italian peninsula, you wouldn't have noticed much of a difference. You would have woken up in the morning the next day. The Roman road would still be out front. The Roman tax collector would still be showing up to collect funds from you. Everything would continue to work. It's only a couple of generations later when you're talking to your grandchildren about how your life was that you would begin to recognize just how you've gone through or witnessed this very slow decline and fall of the Roman Empire. It's not something you would have noticed in a day. Today we probably would because with news cycles and everything else, but at the time you wouldn't have recognized it. And that's really important to know because it's an important parallel in history, if the United States were to fall as a major global power, we probably wouldn't know it living through it. We wouldn't know it maybe for 20 years after, unless there were some major battle or major conflict that truly led to the fall of the United States. So to the average person, nothing has really changed, more especially if you're in a rural area, which is the vast majority of the Roman Empire. Even if you're out on the frontiers, the Roman centurions that had been in town are probably still there. They answer to someone else, and slowly that's going to degrade, that army is going to fall apart, but you're not going to see it day to day. 
So very important thing to keep in mind. 